USA, Egypt, Tunisia, Argentina, Venezuela, and Senegal. Hello, welcome back to Duisburg. Welcome back to the final race. We're finally here, Elise Wood. We're going to get underway. We had a bit of a break there for a thunderstorm. It was a bit scary for a little while. It was a bit. I thought it might set in for a bit longer, but it's blue skies here and ready to go. It's not warmed up, I have to say that much. So, you're, Where's your jumper? You had a jumper on before and you've taken it off and I think you're regretting it already, aren't you? <laughs> I am, I am. A bit of sun and the jumper's off. We're, uh, we're balmy as. So the final race of the competition, it's the men's K1 5000. And look at that field. They're spread out across the course. There's going to be mayhem. They warmed up and then they got told to leave the course because of the lightning. Now they're back on the course. There's 38 athletes there. Amongst them, Mads Peterson from Denmark, the marathon world champion, World Cup champion as well. Fernando Pimenta, a former world champion. We've got Balint No, a former world champion. We've got uh, Joachim Lindberg from Sweden, the reigning world champion. This is a field full of class. Fifty meter mark. That's a tough ask in itself. It really is. Fernando Pimenta has had such a busy week, but you know how determined he'll be to get. He'll be to get out and get amongst this. Hates the portages, and it shows because he's not very good at them. Although he has improved, I think he's been practicing. <laughs> Absolutely. Here we go. It's an absolute. Uh, all out. And on the screen, there he is. He's in the red cap on the far side. There he is there, Fernando Pimenta. So he's trying to get there. If you were, and there's Cubelis, the Spaniard. I think he was a bronze medalist at the last World Championships. Uh, so you know that he'll be up there threatening at some stage. But if you were smart, you'd probably try and keep Pimenta out wide as long as you could. But look at him there. You can see him there near where the lane eight marker is. He's making his way across to the front on the... Under the number, lane nine marker, you can see, I think that's... Uh, got Simon McTavish from Canada Simon McTavish, there. yes, the Canadian. There's the Spaniard Cubellus is there as well. Quaid Thompson from, from New Zealand. And we're keeping an eye out now, just trying to find where Mads Peterson might be, where Ballantino might be from Hungary. 
and where Jakob Lindberg from Sweden could be. Oh, and look at that already. There's some problems on the first turn. You really need to try and stay out of trouble if you can. But as Elise said, there are so many athletes trying to go around a very small corner. It's always so difficult. The boats are obviously so skinny. Um, there's paddles going everywhere, paddles under your boat, in your boat, in your rudder. Uh, you never know where someone else's paddle's going to go. So you just got to keep your, keep your eyes forward and keep your momentum moving forward and hope for the best. So at the moment, it is Pimenta who's got out where he likes to be, out in front. Quillian Koch from France is up there with him. I didn't mention him in the introduction, so uh, good to see him putting in some hard yards early on. And as uh, Simon McTarrish in Canada is still there, he had a good race at uh, one of the World Cups earlier this year. But I think he might have ran into some boat trouble. Now in the back there, you can see Mads Peterson. And also you can see... Is it Jok from Sweden in the back there yes, as well? Yes, he's there as well. Uh, uh, Jokom Lindberg from Sweden is the defending world champion. So he and Peterson next to each other there. I'm sure that they will be keeping a very close eye on each other. I'm just trying to find Balint. No, there he is from Hungary with the white cap on. Here he is there with the sunglasses and the white cap. So getting himself between the two groups at this stage. So they're starting to spread out a little bit now. And it is Pimenta out in front. Right next to him, it's McTavish from Canada. The Canadians had a good day today. They have. He would have been boosted from Maddie's uh, silver and, and Katie as well. She won gold earlier on. So uh, Canada's having a good finish to the regatta. And also in that group there, we've seen the Argentinian, uh, of course, Rodriguez, Augusta Rodriguez, who's up there sitting in third at the moment. So, oh, but he's just clipped the boy, but no damage done. And Thompson from New Zealand. In the uh, in the black singlet, just getting out there, showing off the showing off the biceps, looking quite quite pumped, isn't he? The sun's out, guns out. Sun's out, guns out. It's uh, this, of course, is a warm it's a warm summer's day for New Zealanders. They're enjoying this, but Pimenta is going to come down. Let's see how much he's been working on his portages. He's made an absolute dog's breakfast of some earlier this year. He's up and out of the boat. Look at that. The man has been practicing. Beautiful. I'd, I'd call that clinical. I would, but just watch he doesn't damage his boat because he always has been trying to work out how to best carry the boat. No, I think Simon's being smart there. He's keeping his momentum, but he's emptying some water. Because obviously you can't wear a spray deck in a 5K, so you pick up some water, which is extra weight, which makes you slower. So Pimenta gets in clearly in front. McTavish, nice. Oh, that was very clean. Fantastic. Now, Balint No is in the third position, the Hungarian. So he will be the one. He's a former world champion from Copenhagen. So he will enjoy the position he's found himself in now. Just sitting off the back of Pimenta. And it looks like Mads Peterson is it coming through now as well. I think Peterson might be slipping into third. We'll get a close-up in just a moment. It looks like the style of Mads Peterson moving there. There he is. Very distinctive style that, um, that Peterson has. And bold there from Norway. Always gives a bold showing. Doesn't he? He never, he never gives up. No. He's such a great guy and such a great paddler. He really is. And Balint No there from Hungary. So there is a power three there. Not a bad group to be in, at least if you wanted to chase down a, a lead pack, having those three paddling together. It'll be interesting to see if they share the duties or whether they'll just race their own races here. If you look at that, that pack of three, you know, I'd call those three traditional marathon paddlers. Then if you look at the front two, Pimenta and McTavish, they're more sprint paddlers. So you'll see them go out at the start, obviously, like we've seen there. And the marathon paddlers have come through with those skills towards the end. Because when you get tired, you make more mistakes. And when you make more mistakes, you lose some places, you lose your momentum, and things can start to go wrong. Although Pimenta did paddle in the World Championships, Marathon World Championships. He did. He's very good as well. And, and in fact, interesting, fun fact, um, he's going from here to Denmark for the Marathon World Championships rather than going to Paris. Interesting. I didn't know that. He's going to Denmark to do the Marathon World Championships next weekend. There you go. So, I mean, we'll call that, Simon a traditional sprint paddler. Yes, there, indeed. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? You know what Pimenta would have done. He would have looked and he goes, "Where's the most work? Where's the hardest work <laughs> I'm going to do? Oh, marathon! I'll go and do that." So, I think that maybe up on the big screen there, Pimenta may have noticed that Mads Peterson's moved up now, and Ballet. No, he would not be happy to have those two sitting on his backside. No, he wouldn't. And we know Mads Peterson is a very, very good portager. So 
if he's good, if he's close enough, uh, then he could make a bit of a move on the next portage. So at the moment, it's Pimenta in front from McTavish from Canada. Mads Peterson sitting third. Ballant No is fourth. And in fifth place, I think it's Elvin Vold from Norway sitting there, maybe just getting shunted out the back a little bit on that turn. And there's Joachim Lindbergh, the defending world. Pimenta to be thinking now, you know, does he try and take the lead again or does he? Uh, Peterson and Pimenta, but there they are. Races are uh, now going head to head because you've got Peterson on one side of the dock, you've got Pimenta on the other. Look at that. Look at Peterson's entry. Wow. That is beautiful. <laughs> it really was, it was a sight to behold. Surfing and kayak. I mean, that's what makes him so classy. Now, he's going to continue to do that at every portage, so Pimenta's going to have to make up ground on the water to stay in touch because you know at every portage that uh, there's going to be a bit of distance put between uh, Peterson and Pimenta. But there they are alongside each other. They've seen each other's backs quite a lot this year. What would Pimenta be thinking now, you know, does he try and take the lead again? Or does he just sit back, make sure that gap between him and the next group, you know, is still big enough that they can't catch and then rely on his sprint finish at the end? Uh, I think I think you're right. I think if he is in that if he's this close come to a sprint, I think he would back himself in Absolutely. Uh, against Peterson. Peterson's no slouch, by the way, but Pimenta is just such a powerful a powerful paddler. The, the thing is, the thing that would be weighing on Pimenta's mind, though, is that he, he knows that he just lost ground on a portage. Mm. And it's going to happen three more times. Yeah. Because we've only had two portages. So he's got to figure that, he's got to factor that into his race plan here. He, he's probably also expending a little bit more energy in those portages. You know, it's not as smooth, I guess, or as... Um, second nature for him as, as what it might be for Pedersen. So uh, that all plays into the fatigue levels as well. So at the moment, they have cleared out to a clear gap. You've got uh, Simon McTavish in no man's land. And, and at least you've done a lot of these races. That's the, You don't really want to be in that place, do you? You're just paddling by yourself in the middle of nowhere. You don't. It's a scary place to be because you know the pack behind you is catching you quickly. And you can also kind of tell that you're losing ground on the front. So it's a lonely place, but it's also a safe place. You don't have anyone pushing you in around corners. The portage, you can be a bit safer. So not such a bad thing as long as you can keep your gaps. So at the moment it is Mads Peterson in front. Fernando Pimenta just sitting off the back of Mads Peterson's boat. Just Pimenta making sure that Peterson knows he's there. And then the gap to Simon McTavish from Canada. Were you at the? Uh, you were part of the Australian programs when Simon McTavish was paddling. I was. Yeah, yeah, yep. I was. Been around for a while. He was. Uh, he was. I mean, he was a big loss to the Australian program, but Australia's loss is Canada's gain. Obviously, he's. He is, and he's. He's done such a great job with Canada as well. He's been a long-term member of their K4 now, and um, was in the K2 final today, which was a very, very tight final. So it's good to see him doing well. So here we go, down to another portage. Let's see the difference here. As you can see, Mads Peterson putting in some long strokes here, wanting to make sure that Pimenta is nowhere near him. Interestingly, Pimenta kept his nose on the outside for a fairly long time before he did. swinging in. And this time, they go to the same side. And look at the Whoa. difference. Look at that difference. This is problematic for Pimenta because Peterson is so fast in and out of the boat. Pimenta may be uh, a bit quicker on the in the run, though, but it's just getting in and out of the boat which is causing problems for Pimenta. Let's watch this. Just watch the Dane. Beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. That is... Meanwhile, Pimenta plops himself in the boat. And you have to have some confidence to do that. You do. Now, there is a defending world champion. Is he making a bit of a move here? Joachim Lindbergh from Sweden. He, he won the world title last year and he's making a bit of a move. And he's jostling there with Nico Powerfler from Germany. 
So two very good paddlers going with each other there. And looks like Elwyn Vold as well has slipped back through the field and is now in that, I think that's the third group. So The Germans are loving that though. They love it so much. Did you see Sebastian Brendel? I did. On a portage with one lap to go, pumping up the crowd. Give the people what the people want. Give Exactly. They paid money to watch. <laughs> they paid money to come and watch me paddle and I'm going to give them some, to give them their money's worth. So now Mads Peterson. He probably can see as he comes around the bend, maybe he can catch the big screen. He's got a chance here to put a bit of a gap on between himself and Pimenta. Simon McTavish looking like he's done a truckload of work there and struggling to stay in touch, but he's not a million miles behind. Simon's an absolute workhorse, so, so you know he's not going to give up. He's, you know, when sometimes when you watch these 5Ks, if you're in no man's land, some people will wait, wait for that pack to come through and jump on the wash, but Simon's not that person. Ballin, no, surprisingly, uh, a little bit back in the field, as is Francisco Cabellas from Spain. No is a former world champion, Cabellas a, a, a world championship medalist. But they've got a little bit of work. This is the man here at the front of that pack there, Joachim Lindberg, who will be eyeing off Simon McTavish. He'll be looking at McTavish and he'll be thinking, well, first of all, I'm going to take that bronze medal position and then I'll have a crack at the leaders. But I tell you what, though, at least you wouldn't want to be leaving yourself too much work to do to catch, to catch Ballin, uh, to catch these two, Mads Peterson and Fernando Pimenta. No. They'll just be pulling away, slowly but surely pulling away from the rest of the pack. They're looking comfortable, hey? Pimenta, he looked up at this. He's having a little look at the screen. He's probably just knowing from then, no, Pimenta is looking to make sure he's got his hat on straight and <laughs> everything's looking tickety-boo. I thought I saw a bit of a smile there. Maybe he's quite satisfied with where he is. He looks pretty relaxed. What they need to start thinking about now is they'll start to lap a few of the competitors and sometimes those competitors can get in the way. Yep. Um, if they split around those competitors, will Pimenta be able to grab the wash easily or... When they come across them in a portage, they can get in the way a little bit as well. So Peterson and Pimenta have now really cleared out to a very clear lead. Unfortunately for Simon McTavish, he's in danger of being swallowed up here by Nico Powfler and Joachim Lindbergh, who are moving up on him now as we head towards the portage. And now they go for the first time. Fernando Pimenta has gone to this side of the dock. Let's see if it helps him. A bit better. A little bit better, yeah. yeah. A little bit better. Mads Peterson in and out. Though. Look at that. That is such a smooth style for Mads Peterson. Now, Pimenta looking a bit faster over the ground, though. He's... He does a lot of cross-training, from yeah. what I can tell from his Instagram. So he'd be light on his feet, a good little runner. Just give his thumbs a good workout on the Instagram, too. <laughs> But look at that, the gap. Uh, I mean, this is a skills race, as you can see. You've got to be a good paddler. You've got to be able to cover the distance at a certain pace. But when you add a portage in there, you need to have those skills. So look at this. This is Simon McTavish. There's Joachim Lindberg. There's Nico Palfla. They are trying to catch the Canadian. And there's going to be a really interesting battle for third, I think. And McTavish is not going to enjoy that when he sees a boat come alongside him. You know, it's probably going to be Lindberg, although... Nico Powerfler in and out of that boat pretty quickly as well. So, we saw, race. Sorry. I was going to say, we saw it in the girls' race that uh, Julie Hark got caught, um, similar to what might happen to Simon here. And when you get caught, it feels like everyone's gobbling you up and you lose a bit of your momentum, you lose a bit of confidence. So, hopefully, if that happens to Simon, he can look and calm down and just jump on the wash and conserve a bit of energy. So what we're seeing here, isn't it, Elise, is that after every portage, Pimenta's having to work incredibly hard to stay in touch with Peterson because Peterson's putting a gap in there and then Pimenta has to work hard. You can see there in the background the gap between first and second. So he's having to work to keep in touch and I feel, well, I fear for Fernando Pimenta that it's going to be too hard because we know as well that... Um, that the Dane has another gear, Mads Peterson, and when he decides to flip it into overdrive, he can put some gaps between you and the rest of the field very, very quickly. You know what's interesting? You can't quite see it on the camera here. Oh, there we go. But um, Max Peterson's stroke rate is significantly higher than Pimenta's. He's obviously trying to put a little bit of a gap on now, but Pimenta doesn't seem worried by that. He's backing himself and backing the fact that he can come through at the end. But to have your stroke rate that high, that does take a lot of energy. 
Fernandez. Maybe he thought that this was the chance he had to break the spirit of Fernando Pimenta, but his spirit is not broken easily. There's probably about a 10 metre, maybe 12 metre gap between Peterson, and he's really putting in some stuff. Isn't he? Now, he's really trying to make a move on Pimenta now. He's really trying to blow him away as we come down to the final portage, I think it is. Are we up to five? This must be the fifth portage. We'll hear the bell go in just a minute, but Peterson trying to put this race to bed with one portage to go. And you can hear the bell going now. So Mads Peterson coming in. Now Pimenta with that familiar lackadaisical stroke of his is just pulling up as well. He's getting a bit closer to Peterson as they come down to the dock. So Pimenta has made up a little bit of ground. Maybe it's now eight metres instead of the 12 metres. You can see there from the drone angle. Peterson, there's going to be some traffic in the way here for Peterson. This could slow him down. He's got the American paddler there that he's going to have to get around. But Peterson, for the final time, heads up around the portage. Pimenta, and look at this. See, this is what's happened. So the Americans got in his way and slowed him down. So that's given an opportunity for Pimenta to make up some ground. Not a lot of ground, but if Pimenta wants to back himself in the sprint, he's now got an opportunity, but he's going to have to work very, very hard here. So Pimenta into the boat. Let's... Oh, dear, oh, dear. Not bit. as good as what he would have hoped. No, no, he's lost a bit of a uh, little bit of ground there, but he's going to really pin his ears back now. If there's one person you know is going to really have a crack, it's Fernando Pimenta. Simon McTavish, what's the gap between he... Not much... Oh, my goodness. This race for third. And look at these two. Joachim Lindbergh and Nico Paufler. They are going to chase Simon McTavish down. There's, these two have been racing alongside each other for the entire race. So a little bit of respect there. They've been working together, but that's about to stop. Simon has to have a really good clean push off here because they are hunting him down. They really, really are. And look at Nico Paufler. He wants to breathe down his neck. So, big race for third, but what is going to, you can hear the German crowd, they're pretty happy to see Nico Paufler get into the boat pretty cleanly. Let's have a look back at the front of the course though, and I, can, I think that at the moment it's still Mads Peterson comfortably in front, Fernando Pimenta trying to get to him, but gee, it's a lot of work that he's going to have to do there to, to haul in, you can see there, look at the gap between Mads Peterson I don't think even Fernando Pimenta can bridge that gap. In fact, Peterson... He's, he's a great paddler, but even the best in the world can't overcome the best in the world. No, no. no not, not, in a, not in a marathon race where Mads Peterson does these things in his sleep. So it's going to be Mads Peterson with the gold, you would think, unless it gets unless a boat gets in his way. There is a lot of traffic out there now. Look at Peterson. He's just trying to stay out of everybody else's way. Uh, getting the job done now. Nico Powerflight. There he is. He's about to overtake. He's about to overtake Simon McTavish. You'll hear the German crowd getting excited because Nico Powerflight is about to move into the bronze medal position. And poor old Simon McTavish. It's been a tough race for him out there on his own. But back in the gold medal position, it's coming down to the finish line. Mads Peterson. It's been, once again, another clinic from this young man from Denmark. Next week he'll be competing in the ICF Canoe Marathon World Championships. But today it's all about becoming the 5,000 metre world champion for the first time for Mats Peterson from Denmark. What a perfect race. He executed that from start to finish. You can't fault him. Look at the smile. Yeah. I mean, he just loves it so much. The days love it. Pimenta. And look at this race. McTavish refusing to give in. He's digging deep. He's trying to find something. He wants to finish with a medal. But Nico Paufler, McTavish having another crack. Nico Paufler's thinking, come on. Yeah, leave it out. Paufler in front. Great. McTavish is digging deep. Paufler's trying to hang on. The crowd is getting behind the German. McTavish has thrown everything at him. But I don't think it's going to be today. Unfortunately for Simon McTavish. A brave race, but the Germans get their man home. Nico oh. Kaufler, wow, what a race. You feel for Simon McTavish. You do, don't you? Just pipped at the post, but what a great race. And he can take some real confidence from that still. And these two great friends, <laughs> a lot of respect there for between these two paddlers. Nico Kaufler. 
when you're a, a, an athlete in this race, you know, so many little things happen. So you can see them all debriefing, the little things that have happened, the start, how was the start, how was it coming across the field, the portage, did we bunch up, did we not? So many tales come from it. Everyone say, oh, did you have any trouble out at the portage? And Mads Peterson, nope. Nope, not one, not nope. one trouble. Nope, enjoyed it very much. Uh, can we do some more? Can we add a sixth? Nico Powerful celebrating like he's a world champion. But <laughs> the German crowd, they've, they've stayed around. There's been thunder, there's been lightning, there's been rain. But they've stayed on for the final event of our world championships. Give the people what the people want. Give the people what the people want. That Give is, the Germans a medal. <laughs> that is the Elise Wood quote, and you can write that down and you can use that at any time. <laughs> Francisco Cabalas, no medal for him this year. No medal for Joachim Lindbergh either. No medal either for Ballet No from Hungary, who just really couldn't go with the speed early on. Found it very, very hard. But the man of the moment, as we've become so used to this year, is Mads Peterson. He doesn't get beaten very often. In fact, the only man really who's, who's had the wood on him I could use that word. <laughs> you can. I'll allow you to use my last name. <laughs> yes. Uh, is the only people who have really challenged him is uh, are the South Africans, and they always put out a very, very big race. And it'll be fascinating to see next week how they go, what tactics they use against Mads Peterson. But he's in good form. You take a lot of confidence from that. How hard would it be for him to back up one week later and do a... I mean, the 5,000, I suppose, for him is not a it's not an overly strenuous race in terms of the distance covered. But, but the to work pace hard. would be higher. The pace would be higher. I mean, you prepare for these, I guess. You know, he'd probably, you know, be jumping in an ice bath or be doing a long warm down, getting a massage, making sure tomorrow's easy and, and get some more work into him after that. But... It's not impossible. No. Nope. Well, in a moment, we're going to cross down and hear some words of wisdom from our Danish world champion, Mads Peterson, once again showing us his class and showing us that when he gets in front, there is very few, if any, who can run him down. Let's cross down now and have a listen to our world champion, Mads Peterson. Matt Pedersen, you're the new world champion in 5,000 meter. You showed great technique in the portage. How key was it for your victory? But, um, to do a good portage here, it's, um, it plays a big role. It's uh, super important because it's one of the best places to get uh, away. And then if you break away, then you have to do a lot of hard work because there's a lot of waves. And also the competitors here, it's the best in the world so to come here today and and take the win that's uh, that's amazing and i'm really happy you already won the marathon world championship but it's first time you won the sprint 500 meter world championship what does it mean for you ah, it's uh, it's a big deal um, to win this 5000 meter that have been a big goal and and my coach he won um, the 10000 meter the last one uh, exactly um, 30 years ago uh, on this date, so uh, to win here, that's amazing. And it's a good warm-up because next week in Denmark we have the World Championship in Marathon where we'll do the short track and the standard distance marathon race. So to come away here with a win, that's, uh, that's a pretty good preparation. Congratulations, Matt Pedersen from Denmark, World Champion. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to bet against him at our World Championships in Denmark. He will be very, very hard to beat. And uh, you can watch all of the coverage, by the way, of our Canoe ICF World Championships uh, on uh, Recast next week. Elise Wood, thank you so much for being part of it. I should say uh, congratulations, by the way, not only for the, the quota that you earned, but also back on the water a year after having baby Florence. Thank you, thank you. It's so good to be back. I've loved racing here this weekend. Um, loved being back part of the whole movement and I'm um, excited for the next year.
Well, and we know how much everybody's loved having you back here. Good luck. I know you're going to Par you're going to Paris to try out the, the venue this week, and uh, good luck with that. Good luck with your preparations for Paris next year. Thank you. Thank you for slipping into the commentary box. Thank you, everyone at home, for being part of our broadcast over the last few days. It's been an absolute pleasure to bring you this World Championships. We've seen some incredible racing. We've seen some wonderful World Championships cr champions crowned, but we've seen some wonderful athletes as well. They didn't all win medals. They didn't all win quotas, and they've come from all corners of the globe to be here, and it just shows the global reach of our sport. It is super exciting. We are very, very excited to have 12 months in front of us to build up to the Olympics, of course, and one year from tomorrow, it'll be the Paralympic Games in Paris. It's so exciting. It's so close, you can almost touch it. Thank you to everyone who's been part of the uh, production team for this event. We'll see you again very soon. Over and out.